I'm going to continue talking about the normal model. Um, but instead of uh, finding the area under the curve, what if we're looking at finding a z-score and we are given the area? So in other words, we're just basically working backwards. In some of my previous videos, you were given a z-score and you had to find the area. Now you are given the area and you're trying to find a z-score. Well, just like in those other uh examples that we've done we are going to draw a picture to help make things easier on us so let's take a look at this example it says find the z-score so that's what i'm looking for find the z-score that has 96.16 percent of the distribution's area to the right so if i think about this there's some z-score over here the entire area under the curve is equal to one or one hundred percent so there's going to be some z-score over here i do not know what it is yet but that z-score is going to create a picture where 96.16 percent of the data is over on this side so this isn't my best sketch in the world, but the green area here is what we're trying to find, or the green area is what's given to us, and what we're trying to find is this z-score. I don't know what it is. Well, <clears throat> there's different methods that you could use, and you could always use a table and try to figure out what the z-score is, but I'm going to show you how to do it on your graphing calculator. Um, once again, I think I've said this before, if you're watching these videos, you're probably pretty tech savvy and you've got these, uh, you've got a graphing calculator. Most classes require you to have a graphing calculator anymore for stats, so let's go ahead and use it. The technology is there, let's use it. It's a tool, let's, let's use it. Um, so before when we were given a z-score we would hit second and vars and we would use the normal cdf function well this time we're not given the z-scores we're trying to find the z-score so we're going to go down to number three that says inverse norm we're doing the inverse of what we did before so again i hit second vars for variables go down to number three and I'm going to hit inverse norm or use inverse norm. Now the calculator wants a number, it wants a value right here. Well, in order to uh, give the, in order to have the calculator give us the right value, the calculator assumes that the number we're going to give it is the area on the left. Okay, the calculator calculator assumes that the area you, area you are giving it is the area to the left of the z-score. So I better find out what this area over here is. I have been given 0.9616 to the right, but I need to go 1 minus 0.9616 to get the area to the left. So if I go back to my calculator, I could probably figure that out. Let's go 1 minus 0.9616, and that's going to give me 0 0.0384. So I'm going to go second vars number 3, inverse norm for 0 0.0384. And when I hit enter, it gives me the z-score that cuts off the top... 96.16%. So this z-score right here is equal to negative 1.77. Usually I like for my students to round off the two decimal places when they're using z-scores, so this would be rounded off to negative 1.77.